So up to this point, uh, with the animation videos that uh, you've watched, we've primarily looked at animating these properties here in our channel box. In other words, the translates, the rotates, the scales, and we can also animate visibility. In this video, we're going to take a look at some other techniques for animating uh, that will be a little bit different than animating these, these properties here, uh, these standard properties in the channel box. In particular, we're going to take a look at the deform, nonlinear deformers, and how we can use those not just as modeling tools, but also as animation tools. Uh, We'll take a look at a couple of these. For instance, there's bend. And if I apply bend to this sphere that I just created, uh, you'll see that we can apply this bend to it. Uh, and in addition, we've got these other properties as well. So the low bound and the high bound, which affect the bend. Now the thing to consider in Maya is that if it's something, a value that can change over time, then probably we can animate it. So uh, if I were to select this curvature um, channel here in the channel box and key it, I'm right clicking on the word curvature and then selecting key selected. Uh, and then let's say we go over one second later to frame 24 and I wish to bend it in the other direction and then key it we will get this animation of this object bending. Now, if I get rid of the deformer, it'll go back to its uh, regular undeformed position. We can, in fact, animate lots of different deformers and get interesting uh, different effects on them. So, for instance, I have this polygon plane here and I'll go to deform, nonlinear, and we'll try the uh, wave deformer. With the wave deformer, I'll increase the amplitude and perhaps increase the wavelength as well, or in this case, decrease the wavelength. And we can animate then the offset on it. And if we play our animation, we'll get this. It's a little bit fast. Let's try decreasing it. I recommend exploring all of these nonlinear deformers. Simply create some polygon primitives, add enough resolution to them to make sure that they can deform, and try all six of these and see what they do. We're going to take uh, a look, however, at the sine deformer. Uh, we'll take a look at that now. So I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to go to my uh, content browser here. And we'll bring a dolphin mesh in here. So here we have this dolphin mesh. And what I'm going to do is go to deform, nonlinear, and apply a, a sign deformer to it. Uh, what you're going to notice here, if I increase the amplitude, is that um, it's not deforming on the proper axis. You can see how it's deforming here. Uh, if we work with the offset, this is what we're going to get. However, 
all we need to do is reorient our deformer simply by rotating it. I don't think this is exactly the orientation I want this to go in either. So I'll rotate it some more. And this is looking better. Now, if you're wondering how I'm moving this, all I'm doing is selecting the offset property and then middle mouse dragging in my viewport. Now, this is perhaps a bit much, so let's bring the amplitude down and maybe play around a little bit with the wavelength as well. You can see that I can increase the wavelength or decrease it. Perhaps something like this would be good. And let's go ahead and try keying the offset now. So I'm going to, uh, actually I'm going to bring it to a value of negative 10. I'll key it scrub in my timeline to frame 120 and we'll bring it over to positive 10 and key it. And now if we play the animation, we'll get this. Now one thing you'll notice when I play it is that it has some slow in, slow out on the offset here. You already know how to adjust your animation curves in the graph editor. We've covered that in earlier videos. Um, we can do the same thing with our uh, deformer here. Notice that I actually have my deformer selected right now, sign one handle. Uh, you can see that I have it selected in my outliner. With it selected, I will go to my graph editor. And here is the animation curve. And as you can see, we have a slow out and a slow in. But if I want this to move at a constant rate, I can select the animation curve and then click on the linear button here. And now it will move in a very linear fashion. Now, I'm not sure why it's not actually playing the animation right now. Ah, oh, there it goes. Now, a couple things to understand about these deformers is that if I grab this mesh and I move it off of the, um, the deformer, uh, it will no longer uh, be animated. Let's see if I move it over here. It's still animated, but it's really not deforming like we want it to. So uh, what I may want to do is select the mesh and select the deformer and perhaps group them. Now I can move this group anywhere I want and the dolphin will stay animated. Let's try another example. A very similar one, but this one will be a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, content browser, and this time we'll bring the shark in. I'm going to apply another sine wave deformer on, uh, on this object. 
So with the mesh selected, I'll go to deform, nonlinear, sign. Again, we're going to need to arrange or reorient the deformer. So it's going down the length of the shark. Uh, we'll try increasing the amplitude. And for this one, we probably do want it in this axis. Uh, you can see how this is going to look when it's animated. Perhaps I'll adjust the uh, wavelength. And we'll try to get something that we like here. I think that's working. So I'll go ahead and animate that as well by right-clicking on the channel, key select, scrub in my timeline to frame 120 to the end of my timeline, change the offset number, and key it as well. Perhaps I'll uh, go ahead and go to my graph editor now and make this animation curve linear. And now we have this. Before wrapping up this video, we'll take a look at one more fun animation technique. Uh, this one, however, will not be one of the uh, deform uh, type effects. It will not be one of these non-linears. Uh, this time instead, what we'll do is what is called a motion path. So I'm going to first create my path. Let me go to my top viewport here. And I'm going to use a uh, NURBS curve for this. Simply draw path. Perhaps adjust the path a little. Perhaps something like that. And what I'm going to do now is attach this shark, this swimming shark, to my motion path. Now, I could just attach it. Uh, the problem is then if I attach the shark to the motion path, it's going to take it off of its uh, sine wave deformer. So instead, what I'm going to do is select both the shark and my deformer and I'm going to group them. In addition, uh, I'm going to group it one more time. So in fact, I have a group nested under a group and then the shark and the deformer uh, nested inside that. Uh, I'm going to take my first group and I'll just call it attach to motion path, and I'll just call this the shark deformer group. Okay, so I'm going to take my uh, attach motion path group that I just created, and I'm going to shift select the curve. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, under my animation menu set here, I'm already in animation, but if you have animation here, rather than modeling or one of these other menu sets, uh, then you'll have the option here of constrain. And if you go to constrain, we have motion pads attach to motion path. So if I click on that, my shark will attach to the motion path. And now if I play the animation, 
my shark will swim along the path. Looks perfect. I think we're done here. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Okay, I'm just kidding. So if I select the object that is attached to the motion path, what you'll see is under the inputs motion path, I have this U value. It's already animated. It's uh, automatically when you create your motion path, it sets an animation key at the beginning and the end of your timeline. Uh, and the property that is actually being animated is the U value. You can see that if I select this word and then middle mouse drag in my viewport, I can move it anywhere along that path that I want. And I can key this value. Um, I'm going to leave uh, it at its default, however. I'm not going to add any other keys. But I will adjust the animation curve on it. Right now you'll notice that uh, it's subtle, but there is a slow in, slow out at the beginning, uh, as is the default behavior in Maya, typically. If I open up my graph editor, you'll see here is uh, this animation for the U value. I'm going to make the shark swim at a linear speed, so I'll change that curve there like that. Uh, the other thing, the other thing you'll notice is that in here we can adjust these values to uh, change the orientation of our shark. To get it to swim in the proper direction. Now I'm actually going to set that up twist back to zero because uh, my preferred method is actually not to set it here. This is the reason why I created these two groups here and why I nested them. This group is what I attached to the motion path, so it's taking its rotation from the motion path. I really cannot rotate it, but I can rotate the group underneath it. And this makes for a very easy way simply using rotation to reorient something along its motion path. So let's see how that looks. We'll go ahead and hit play and let this shark swim towards us. So that's a little bit about animating motion paths uh, as well as using deformers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.